Hi, I'm Staley Weidman with the Catamaran Company. We're in Gloucester, Virginia. Today we are on the Sovereign 73. We'll be shooting this boat for the next day and we'll get some offshore shots for you. Here we have nearly a hundred foot high carbon fiber mast. From what I can see with all the fittings, they look like they're in great shape. There's an aluminum boom. It has a uh, Park Avenue style shelf on it that collects the, uh, the mainsail. All the lazy jacks uh, are nicely organized. Stack pack's new. We've got some solar up here that'll operate the boat on 12 and 24 volt power when underway and a raised helm station with a real windshield and an enclosure that goes, that goes around it. And if the weather's really bad, there's an inside helm station here. All the glass on the front of the salon here is in good shape. There's no cracks. There's no issues with, uh, with the glass delaminating. It's all in good shape. The non-skid on the boat's in perfect condition. What's interesting to notice is this Australian built boat has full size, all stainless steel railing. Most yachts like this have just a stainless steel cable, maybe three strands about this high. This has full height, very, very safe, particularly if you've got small children or boats. And I think it's great peace of mind offshore having that kind of solid railing all the way around a boat. I'm gonna show you some other features on this that really underscore how much of an offshore global cruiser this boat is. Not only is she built with epoxy and carbon fiber and some glass, but you also notice up here forward, we don't have a aluminum cross beam. This is all carbon and glass. Two electric uh, furling systems. I believe this one is uh, hydraulic with an electric power pack. We've got life rafts mounted up here on the deck and two anchor windlasses up here forward. These can be actuated from either the helm, the raised helm there in the back, or from the helm inside. And you have a self-tacking track here for the, uh, for the jib. That means you can sail the boat and tack through the wind without having to touch the jib sheets on the, on the boat as you come through. Very easy boat to shorthand sail, even though it's 73 feet long with a huge sail plan on it. I'm down in the uh, port forward bow locker. There's a whole set of uh, line hangers here to secure lines. And in this compartment I just opened up, that's where one of the two bow thrusters is located. It's really easy to access. The unit looks like it's in good shape and operated perfectly while we were out sailing today and maneuvering back onto the boat. Here you can see there's plenty of space for spare sails and lines and easy to access with a large ladder with big flat rungs on it. All right, we got all big boy Ron Stan sailing hardware here. We're on a carbon fiber cross beam. This is the Pro Furl. Electric furling drum for the Code Zero. This is operated with a very small wireless uh, device. So when we were getting this sail in and out, it's possible to stand anywhere on the boat or get on the, on the uh, sheet winch for the code zero and furl that. I think that's a great idea. I think a lot of yachts really should have that. To raise and lower the mainsail, there's a electric halyard captive winch. And this is 
the, the main halyard. So it's attached to the head of the sail. We've got it partially uh, raised here so you can see it. This halyard disappears below the deck. It goes through a turning block that's right about here behind the anchor windlass. It goes through this locker and it goes to what's called a captive winch. That's a hydraulic winch. It's a spool about this big that rolls up the halyard and it has a device that goes back and forth so it lines the halyard back and forth on the drum. The drum itself is accessible from, uh, from back here and the device that basically makes it level wind onto the drum is here and goes back and forth. So to raise the mainsail, you simply press the up or the down button. There's no line to tail, there's no halyard all over the deck, there's no two to one block on the top of the uh, main, and it just rolls up. It's about as simple as can be. What's great about that is in a catamaran when you're raising the mainsail, sometimes if you're not perfectly into the wind or if the wind's not stable enough, the mainsail, the battens will get caught up in the lazy jacks, which means you have to lower it down. On a conventional boat with an electric winch, that means you have to take the line off the winch and put it back on again after easing it, and hopefully it goes up smooth. With this, you simply go up or down. No hands on it, no line to, to coil up. It's really a, a very, very nice uh, and simple to operate system. So I'm going to go in here in this locker, I'm going to show you what this device looks like. Because you won't see this on very many yachts. So down in here you can see the plate, and you can see the captive drum with a level wind on it. This is what we're looking at back over here. That's where the halyard comes in and that goes back and forth on that drum to make sure that halyard rolls up there uniformly. You can see the splice here where the cover is on it and it goes to the spectra line that goes on the drum. So we're going to go in the other locker on the other side and show you what that looks like. So this is the captive drum for the main halyard. This hydraulic motor here. These are the cables to operate it. This is the back side of the drum where the halyard rolls back and forth on there and is securely concealed below the deck. It could not be easier to operate. All right, we're on the tender lift. This tender lift was not fit on the boat when it was brand new. It was fit uh, aftermarket by the current owner. It is uh, beautifully fit. You can see it fits the whole uh, transom profile of the boat and it's huge. So this is a 16 foot hard bottom inflatable with an aluminum hull. We've got a center console, 50 horsepower outboard on it. I think this is a 1200 kilogram tender lift platform, but it's huge. I, I think you could probably fit from a length point of view Probably a 19 foot tender across the uh, the back, maybe a little bit bigger with an extension. And then we're gonna open up this aft cockpit area. You can see we've got this nice uh, sunscreen here. This is all removable. So we'll have that opened up and we're gonna go sailing. One of the things I wanted to point out is this Traveler. This is very, very high level uh, Harkin hardware. You can see it's curved, it matches the uh, transom of uh of the boat We've got a huge uh harken car there on the on the back all this looks like it's in good shape and then we have a electric flat winder to move the traveler back and forth and that's actuated from the buttons on the starboard side that control the electric main sheet winch Tender lift platform is easy to operate. You've got an up and down button with a wireless remote so you can float your dinghy uh, on and off. And she goes straight down into the water very effortlessly. And then from there, launches the dinghy. Or you can put your dive gear on there and go for a dive or set up some chairs for a little happy hour beach action.
This is one of the most desirable options on any of the new yachts that we sell. And luckily, the Sovereign has that on it. Done. Quickly and easily. You can see the transom is extended out, so the boat has uh, quite a bit of, of water line. The owner tells me that he's had this boat sailing at over 20 knots, and I can see just from a naval architecture point of view with these narrow appendages aft, I'm sure that helps the boat's uh, offshore sailing performance. If you got really high quality fittings through here for dock lines, cleats, this is a storage compartment here. You can put snorkel gear there. There's a swim ladder for the other side and there's shore power connections here on the back so you can connect the shore power from either side. I mean, the boat has an enormous beam. I think we're probably around 26, 27 feet. Uh, so we can connect shore power to this side or to that side of the boat where we're connected right now. Shore power, got a shower handle there. And once again, solid stainless steel railing all the way down the side of the boat, even from the transom. Really high quality fittings. And here on the transom, we've got a barbecue grill, propane bottle behind it. This is a very nice stainless shelf that uh, is designed to, to house the, that grill. And to furl and unfurl the Code Zero. Once again, another wireless remote. You can see that rolls it out and that rolls it in. Very, very simple to operate. And this allows you to furl the Code Zero from either side, uh, whether you have the sheet on the port or starboard side to control, and also gives you an opportunity to keep your eyes on it in case you're in some area where it's not easy, you can step out and have uh, access to furl that up. And there's also a backup. This is the aft cockpit area. Got a nice fan here to keep air moving. This is the entrance into the port engine compartment. This is where the washer and dryer is located. Got two seats. This is a double-sided fridge, so it's accessible inside the boat and also from the cockpit. You got this nice opening between the galley uh, bar area and the outside bar area. We have two hatches that open up here. These, this creates airflow into the aft cockpit area. You have these nice sunscreens that diffuses the light in the afternoon uh, when you're at anchor. All the teak decking's in excellent shape. It's a little bit wet right now. This is the main sheet for trimming the mainsail in and out. We have uh, high and low speed buttons. And then also for the traveler, we can control the traveler with the flat winder at a port and starboard. And then on this side, we have the jib sheets and main halyard. All right, we're at the helm station, getting ready to uh, head out. Just wanted to point out, so we've got electronic engine throttles here. We've got controls for the electric anchor windlasses. We have two of those. The dagger boards are uh, hydraulic, so we can raise and lower those from the helm. We have the controller for the underwater lights, bow thruster control, the new Garmin uh, displays. These were uh, just installed. So we got chart plotter, radar, AIS, and we have the Garmin uh, wind instruments. We have the furler control for the jib and a wireless remote for the Garmin autopilot and VHF. I just want to point out as you look around here from this helm position, you can see a great panoramic view. We're raised up above the coach roof. 
There you can see the solar cells and the KVH uh, track dome. And from here, we're gonna be heading out. Yep, and overhead, we've got uh, great visibility of the sails. You can see, you can see the mainsail and uh, mast quite well through that. And it also provides some nice ventilation into uh, this space for the helmsman. Two nice seats so two people can sit up here comfortably. This is a night view of the raised helm station. You can see all the new Garmin electronics operational. You got wind speed, direction, multifunction display, new radar. And with seating for two, that can be well protected in uh, inclement weather. This is the port engine compartment. It has a larger above deck level entrance. And the reason for that is in this space, we have a washer and a dryer. There's also some uh, two freezer compartments here for cold storage. And in this area back here behind me, we have a water maker, uh, very easy to access and the uh, tender lift hydraulic control. And what I'm sitting on is a uh, soundproof containment area for the Yanmar engine. And that's located up underneath this space. So very easy to access and also keeps this area cooler and quiet. And then here on the side, you can see that we've got a uh, bilge pump manifold. This is a real indication of the kind of quality that was built into this boat when it was constructed in Australia. This is real like mega yacht quality stainless steel plumbing. Got a fire suppression system up here on the right and a number of valves for transferring fuel, managing the uh, bilge pump uh, discharge. And we'll go have a look at the starboard side. This uh, aft compartment here is access to the rudder post and where the autopilot uh, control is located. Right now we're in the starboard engine compartment and there's an elevated area that comes up on the bridge deck and what we're looking at right now are three brand new chilled water compressors for the air conditioning system. So we've got three new control boxes and three new compressors uh, all mounted in here. The installation looks excellent. Everything's double hose clamped. Uh, the wire runs are all neat and orderly and certainly shows a lot of li uh, reliability going forward with the air conditioning system. Here's a new Victron 12 volt 40 amp charging system. This goes into the house battery bank. Here we have a Onan generator. This is a 17 and a half kilowatt generator. Shows in great condition. Engine hours are in the listing. To the right here is another great example of the quality of the manufacturer of this boat. You can see it's very high end stainless steel bilge pump manifold uh, going to various uh, compartments of the boat to pump out all high quality valves. This is for the uh, fuel filling transfer. We have a fire suppression system in here. That's all in good shape. And you can see the quality, all the stainless steel pipe work here for the fuel system transfer. And then this is the starboard engine. This is in the middle of this uh, engine room space. You can see I've got standing headroom about eight feet here above the engine. There's plenty of room to work. And this is the access to the starboard engine compartment. We just shot uh, the engine and generator here. But as you go down and you come up, this whole area is standing headroom inside that engine room. So uh, you'll see in part of the video, there's eight feet there above the, the engine. 
It looks like it's going to be tight, but actually when you get in there, there's plenty of room.